chat box is looking rather empty, so I'm sensing we've got some shy folk on the call. Okay. All right. Well, it's three minutes past. So in the interest of time, I am going to crack on. So bear with me whilst I share my screen. And I'm just going to introduce us to the session. So hopefully you can all share, see my screen. Can you see a presentation? Yes, I'm seeing thumbs up, fabulous. So welcome to this webinar on maintaining personal resilience and well-being during the COVID-19 pandemic. So hopefully most people are with us now, but I'll just run through the housekeeping before I run through that. So for context, we are re recording the webinar, but only this plenary session rather than the breakout sessions where some kind of people may be sharing some more sensitive points. So I just want people to be aware that we are recording it. So if you'd rather not feature, you can turn your camera off um, and change your name or let me know if you've got any major concerns about that being uh, about it being recorded. Um, obviously, microphones muted when you're not talking, just so we don't get any background noise. And then, as I've said, please make use of the chat box, sharing ideas, introducing yourselves, supporting each other. It's there for that reason. So this year has been challenging, to say the least. And many of you have expressed feelings of fatigue, exhaustion and burnout. So this webinar aims to provide some support to not solve that, but more relieve that, um, giving you a chance to stop, reflect on how you've managed this year and learn new ways to prioritise your resilience and create a shared language to address negative patterns, both individually and within your wider teams. So Peter Leffert will be hosting the session and he's with us, with us at the minute and I'll introduce him shortly, um, but he'll be introducing the meaning well, actually, the agenda is we'll have a, a brief minute of attunement. So this is just will be kind of a space where we have a minute of silence just to make sure that we're all breathing, calm, coming into the session with, um, you know, an open mind. So we'll have that first. And then Peter will run us through what is personal resilience and how does this link to burnout? The resilience tree, which is a, an excellent tool that he'll be telling us more about to kind of build our resilience and figure out what works for us and what we need, as well as breakout groups to discuss your own experiences and your ambitions for maintaining your resilience in the future, as well as chance to ask questions and kind of summarize the discussions from the session. So, Firstly, um, I will start with the attunement after after that we will start with the attunement so I'm just going to start with that minute of silence basically it sounds a bit strange because a minute of silence is often when we're remembering something or marking an occasion but this one is just all about us it's for our own benefit so we're all going to take the opportunity to close our eyes breathe and create a calm shared space before we begin so from now it's six minutes past so we'll just wait for it to turn seven minutes past and then i think we'll we'll go um in fact i'm just going to do a minute timer on my computer so i think for now please feel free to turn your cameras off mute yourselves and we'll just have a minute of silence
Okay, thanks very much all for that. Um, now we're all feeling a bit calm, we've had a chance to breathe. I'm going to hand over to Peter to run the rest of the session. Thanks, Peter. Great, thanks, Cecily. Um, could you stop sharing your screen and I'll uh, take over? Brilliant, thank you. And uh, hi, everyone. Um, so, yeah, so resilience. So I'm going to talk a bit um, about uh, about what this means and, and kind of uh, a few frames that I think are useful and then work through with you a tool um, that I've used quite a few times that I think is a, a helpful way to try and engage with this idea. Um, I'm conscious it's a, it's a huge issue, uh, the idea of resilience. Uh, we've got less than an hour to kind of get through it. So I'm not uh, expecting that everyone will come away, uh, you know, 100% resilient and that's it for the rest of their lives. But it's an opportunity to kind of uh, engage with the idea in a different way um, and, and sort of think about different language or different patterns that not only I hope will be useful for, for you here, but also for the people that you work with and for the teams and the groups uh, and the, the organizations that you're, you, that you're in. Um, so I'll uh, share my screen now. Um, and um, I, I really like this this picture, just, I mean, memorations of starlings are lovely, but I think that's, it's an important thing to, to, to bring up when we're talking about personal resilience is it's not just about us as individuals, it's about us as groups as well. And to build our resilience, we need to understand how we, how we relate to other people and how resilience comes into that. So I'm gonna just talk a little bit about um, what, what I think resilience means. And, and this is based on, I've been running kind of these sorts of workshops for about 10 years uh, now. So I've spoken to a lot of people at a lot of different places um, and, um, and kind of adapted this based on, on, on feedback from them. So the, the first thing I wanna say, and I think this is a really important thing whenever we talk about resilience, because it is such a, a, such a buzzword and it is kind of overused in a lot of ways, is, is one of the limitations I think of of personal resilience. So this is, um, you know, a kind of very uh, basic summary of, of how change happens. So we've got where we are and where we want to be. And sometimes when we try and get from where we are to where we want to be, there is a shock in a way and that shock happens and that shock can send us back to where we were or it can send us further back than where we were. Um, and, and this is how burnout can happen um, and this is why we need resilience to be able to respond to those shocks. It's not necessarily bouncing back because that implies some kind of lightness necessarily. And sometimes it's really not a very light process, uh, but it is about the response, how we respond to things. And building resilience personally and, and in groups is one way of doing this. But I think it's really important from the very beginning that we acknowledge it's not the only way to do this. There's also a whole part of this, which is about we need to change the way change happens because we exist in systems that make it very hard for us to be resilient and make it very hard for us to prioritize our own resilience. And um, whether that's through uh, you know, advertising, through politics, through social media, we, we're constantly getting messages that make it very hard for us to look after ourselves. So I say this because absolutely there are things that we can do to, to, to prioritize our own resilience and to build that up. But if we find ourselves in a position where we're not resilient, it's not necessarily our fault. It's not something we should feel bad about because the systems that we exist in make that hard. Uh, and, and changing that system is something we have to do collectively. Uh, and that's not necessarily something we'll get into today. But I just think, bear that in mind. If, if, if what I'm talking about seems really difficult, that's okay. That shouldn't be something that you should take uh, on yourself and hold for yourself. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, about what burnout is and a way to think about it uh, uh, in the context of resilience. And I think sometimes uh, it's easy to see burnout and resilience as either two ends of a spectrum or as, uh, as kind of binary things of you are burnt out or you're not, or you are resilient or, or, or you're not. Uh, and we can fall into these patterns of talking about them, which are, which are understandable because they're very complex, nuanced ideas. But actually, I think that's a very unhelpful way uh, to, uh, to, to approach it because it really makes it very hard to talk about. Um, we need to see burnout and resilience as patterns, not as things you either are or you are not are not. And I think there are two key reasons to that. One is that it's incredibly subjective. You know, the language we use is really hard to, to really be clear what we mean when we say resilient or when we say burnout. And, and also, if we only think about it in terms of when we are or we aren't one or the other, then we leave acting until it's too late. 
because either we're we're not burnt out or we are so seeing as a pattern we start to be able to act right now Where, wherever we are in those patterns we can act today we don't have to wait until it's got so bad that urgent action is needed so to think of it as a pattern i want to walk through this um, this process which, which is called the, the burnout cycle um, I've done a lot of reading around, around burnout, and this is probably the, the, the most helpful description I've ever seen of it, I think. So we can start with this idea of a desire to prove yourself. So we've all got that thing within ourselves, which is maybe who we think we should be or who other people think we should be. Uh, and this is often tied up in our work or whatever it is we do and we throw ourselves into. It could be paid work. It could be voluntary work. It could be work in a family setting. But we need to we, we, we want to prove ourselves there's there's someone we want to be and we put ourselves into that so what that can lead to is is working harder we you know we really put time and effort and energy into being that thing that we think we should be and as we work harder we start to neglect our own needs so what maybe that's about uh, uh food maybe that's about sleep maybe it's about something more uh, emotional about the kind of the support we need we start to put that to one side to focus on the thing we think we need to achieve. As we do that, we start to ignore conflicts. We notice that there are things that aren't quite right, that aren't quite working, uh, and things coming up against each other, and we ignore them because we don't really have the energy or the headspace to deal with that right now. So we close that box, we put it away, and we keep trying to focus on, I need to be this person, this is who I need to be. As we start to do that, we can get into them revising our values. The things that are important to us can start to feel less important because there's this external value that's, that's maybe it's about, you know, replying to that email or finishing that report or, or supporting that other person rather than ourselves. And we start to change what it is that feels important to us. As we do that, we can quite easily slip into denial. So again, we know something is wrong. It's not quite right, but but we don't want to engage with that. We don't feel like we can, it's too big, it's too heavy. There's too much to think about. So we put that away, we, we kind of shut that door and we don't engage with that idea. As we do that, that can really easily lead to, lead to withdrawal. Again, we know something's wrong and engaging with other people makes that really uncomfortable and sometimes quite painful. So we can withdraw and this can be a, an emotional withdrawal from people, we don't open up to them, or a physical withdrawal. We, you know, we literally don't put ourselves in situations where we will be near other people uh, because we just can't deal with that. It's, it's too uncomfortable. And at some point, these behavioral changes will become um, obvious and apparent to other people. And the reason this is a cycle is because as soon as that happens, we go straight back to the, the top because as soon as we think that other people think that we can't cope or we can't be who we should be, that desire to prove ourselves kicks in all over again. And so this can be a, a cycle and it can go round and round and round. And um, one thing I think it's really worth uh, to mention right now is that that desire to prove yourself, I mean, you can change any of the language, make it work for you, but but another way you could, you could frame that is around uncertainty. I think that's really relevant right now in terms of uncertainty can do the same thing because in, in uncertainty, we don't know what is expected of us. We don't know what we're supposed to do. We don't have that clarity. And so that can equally prompt this cycle. So I, I share this not as a, this is exactly everybody's experience. And, and if, you, if you don't think that this rings true for you, then you're wrong. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. You know, change the language. These might happen in different orders, but the, the principle here is that this is a pattern. These are series of things that can happen in any order and they can spiral down. Uh, and you, we're all we're all in this pattern, you know, all the time. And sometimes it's fine, and it's it's not getting any worse. Um, and it can also spiral upwards. It can be a positive cycle if we kind of move the other way through this. Um, but this is a helpful way. Instead of thinking about burnout as you either I or you aren't, I find this to be a much more helpful way of, of, of talking about that and talking about the patterns we might be stuck in and checking in with yourself of. Am I experiencing any of those? Am I demonstrating any of those? Could be a helpful, helpful way to think about it. Um, if anybody's got any questions about that, please do uh, put them in the chat and I can, I can come back to it later. And, and I think Cecily will be able to share the slides later. Um, but I really would encourage you to kind of go through that on your own and think about what there is relevant for me. What might I change to make it more relevant? And use that as a way to communicate with other people as well, to articulate any kind of negative patterns you find yourself experiencing 
um, because it can be such a hard thing to talk about. But until we do talk about it, it's very difficult to kind of to move past that. Um, so the, what I want to go on to now is the um, is this tool that I uh, that I want to work through. There's a, there's a kind of few different tools I've, I've used in my time, um, but I think this is the one that's most uh, that's most useful and most relevant uh, to um, uh, to what we're talking about to, to, to this idea of resilience. And it's, uh, it takes the form of a tree because uh, I think natural metaphors can be a really nice uh, way for people to, to engage with an idea. Um, and what we have with the tree is it's made up of the roots and the fruits. So the roots of resilience are the things that give us resilience, the, 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 the places we get it from. And the fruits are the things that resilience gives us. Uh, so the benefits of, of being resilient. Uh, and again, I'm not gonna go too much into, into what resilience is because I think it's, it's, it can mean different things to different people, but it's this idea of the ability to respond to shock and that can be big or that can be small. But in doing this exercise, I wanna really kind of explore what resilience really means to us because I think you're all here so you probably all think that resilience is a good thing uh, and there's loads you know you can just google the word resilience and resilience tips and you'll, you know you'll get loads and loads of ideas of things you can do to boost your resilience and that's great but unless we're actually able to prioritize our own resilience and actually take action on it and go no this is really important for me we're fighting a losing battle and, and having you know the longest list in the world of things isn't going to make a difference because if we can't bring that into the, uh, the the spaces that we're in or the groups or the teams that we're in uh, then we're, we're left to hold that on our own and it can be a really hard thing to do. So I hope that makes sense and what I want to do to kind of to get into this is, um, is start thinking about the the roots. So um, I'm going to um, ask you to share your, your own thoughts of these uh, and I'm going to try and um, uh, write them down uh, as, as quickly as I can. Um, so without thinking about it in too much detail, what I want you to do is um, you can either unmute and, and say out loud or in the chat box, start sharing some things that, that give you resilience. So great, some really good examples there straight away. We've got family, faith, sleep, uh, community, volunteering. So yeah, exactly, things like this. Yeah, we've got uh, friends, um, protecting time off. Exercise, great. Um, there's loads. Apologies if I miss any. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can, trying to catch ones uh, outside in nature. Uh, passion, gardening. These are great. Right, let's start a new line. Realistic expectations. That's nice. Um, well, this is uh, always fun for me trying to speed spelling. Um, reading. Good boss. It's walking. Uh, you get yoga, eating well, lists, yes, actually I like lists, connection with others, um, birds, nice, having fun, laughing, a couple more, sorry if I've missed any that you've put, um, I've been trying to keep, a, keep an eye out, um, support network, yes, great, got nature, journaling, right, uh, okay, I'll get a couple more there, self-care, uh, recharging, great, and I uh, will leave it there. We've got sleep, yeah, that's a really good one. So this is a lovely list of things. And um, I would encourage you just to, you know, to keep that list going. When you do this exercise yourself, which I would I, I would definitely recommend doing, is really say, you know, take a while, you're never gonna get everything, but just try and really explore and kind of, you know, what are the obvious ones? And then maybe thinking a little deeper, what are some of the, the other ones? Yeah, radio, exactly. That's, that might be a kind of idea that, that maybe comes after you've thought about it for a little bit. Um, uh, good Zoom meetings, yes. Well, we can uh, check in about that at the end of this. Um, so what, what we do next is, um, is once, we've, um, once we've got this list, is thinking about it and, and trying to notice some of the patterns uh, that are here, some of the different types of, of, of ideas we've got. So um, as an example, so I'm gonna look at some of these and think, okay, so we've got something like sleep, uh, volunteering, uh, exercise, uh, sports, being outside, gardening, reading, walking, yoga, eating well, lists, birds maybe, um, journaling so these are all things that you can kind of you can go and do 
Right? If I said to you, after this meeting, I want you to go and do these things, um, then obviously sometimes they're not accessible for whatever reasons, but generally they're things you can do. You know, I, yeah, maybe you can't just go and sleep, but that is something that you, you understand how that process works and what that means to you and how to go and do that. And when we look at some of the other ones, um, so, uh, you know, passion, um, laughing, uh, ha yeah, having a good boss, having realistic expectations, um, you know, maybe self-care, recharging. I think those are things that we would recognize as being really important. You, but how do you get that? You know, obviously something like having a good boss, there's a lot of, a lot, a lot of luck in there, but something like having realistic expectations, you can recognize that that's an important thing, but how do you actually make that happen? What does that actually mean in practice? Uh, and, and one of the things that's really useful to do is think about what, well, how do these kind of relate to each other? So for example, think about something like sleep. Sleep is something you can, you can identify what that means, but, but why is that important? What is it about sleep? And dig down a little deeper. So dig down below sleep to something like, you know, maybe is that about, is about rest, is about energy, something like that. And then with the ones in pink, like passion, for example, work a bit more with passion. Think, where do I get that from? Is that from is that from something else that's represented here? Uh, you know, is that from is that from creativity? Uh, you know, or is it from you know, friends or something like that, or from having a support network or, or having fun? And start to kind of draw the connections between these things, because just like with burnout, resilience is all about patterns, and patterns is all about noticing feedback and noting what happens when, when you do one thing, what happens as a result. So this is why, you know, it's, it's great that there are loads of lists out there about, about burnout, about resilience and, and tips for resilience. But until we actually explore what those really mean, then it's just gonna be a nice list of things. Uh, and if you're like the person who said that lists give you resilience, that's great. But if that's not something for you, we need to dig into that a little bit deeper. And to, to explore that a little bit more, I wanna move on to, um, uh, to the top and look at the, the fruits of resilience. So this can sometimes be a little bit harder to do, to think about, okay, so we've got what, um, what gives you resilience, but what does resilience give you? So same thing in the chat box, I'll, I'll type as quickly as I can, what are the things that being resilient gives you? Okay, so empowers, great. Motivation, positivity. That's uh, lots of votes for confidence, <laughs> dark sense of humor. That's great, great. Um, energy, uh, better quality relationships. Yeah, that's great. Uh, keeping going, creativity. Okay, maybe this is, maybe you're finding this very easy. Um, productivity, self-belief. As again, if I miss any, I do apologize. Um, uh, bigger picture, these are all excellent. Health, so it's a really nice um, mixture of things. So we've got ability to sleep. So sleep is a good example of, of something that, that could be a, a root and a, uh, and a fruit. Be of service, yeah, that's great. Ability to do more. Feel balanced. Doing what I do, yeah, that's great. Purposeful, nice word. Calm, in, outlook, making a difference, space to laugh, great, and I'll leave that there. I'm sure you could keep going, but that is another excellent list. Again, apologies if I if I missed one one of the things you you read, but they they were all um, all really good examples. So. So again, I think this is a, another, another time where it's really useful just to go through this, just to kind of let your mind go and go through the obvious ones, but then keep going and think about, you know, what, what else is there? And this is really important because unless we understand why resilience is good and what it actually means to us, it's really difficult to make that leap from coming to a workshop about resilience or talking about why resilience is good and actually being able to do something about it and actually be able to embed that within your life. 
And so starting with a list like this is, is a really good place to, uh, to, to, to start, but we need to go a little bit deeper to really explore what this means in practice. So similarly to the, uh, to the um, roots, what we can do is we can kind of break these down into, into, again, a couple of different categories. But this time, instead of thinking about how do we actually make these things happen, I want you to think about what does this actually mean for my life? So for example, confidence. Confidence might be something, and, and I'm gonna make some assumptions here, and if you disagree, that's absolutely fine. Confidence might be something where, where, where you can say, okay, if you were more confident, you can tell what impact that is gonna have on your life. Maybe the same with productivity. You can see what is that actually gonna to do to me? How is that gonna make a difference? Uh, you know, potentially be of service. Health is a, probably a good example, and the ability to sleep. You can, you can kind of understand what does this mean to me? Um, you know, it's the sort of thing that if we were talking about a business and if we were talking about a product, you'd be able to put a financial value on some of these things, which is absolutely not what I want you to do here because this is, you know, way kind of way beyond that. But it's thinking about that. What does this really mean? Because when we look at some of the other ones, so looking about, uh, you know, positivity or a dark sense of humor or energy or, or better quality relationships. Again, these are probably things that everybody wants. I mean, maybe not everybody wants all of those things. Um, but, but being calm, being in my element, you know, these are great. And if I told you, you could have this thing for free, you could have calm, probably everybody would want that. But if I told you, okay, you could have calm, but you have to do these things in order to get it, then it starts to be a bit harder because then we have to think, well, calm is good, but what does that really mean to me in my day-to-day -day life? To be more calm, to have more self-belief. I know these things are important, but just how important are they? Uh, how important are they? And this is really crucial. This is, I think, the key to, to kind of getting into to resilience and starting to explore it in a slightly different way is thinking about what does this really mean? How is this going to have an impact on my life? And, and the idea behind this exercise is to really start to drawing out the patterns, like with the, with the burnout cycle, but here the positive patterns of the behavior I take and the action that that will lead to. Uh, and, and, and in an ideal world, what we'd like to get to is something where we can start drawing links between, for example, uh, you know, family and being calm, for example, or something like that, or between uh, walking and having energy. And it's not as simple as that. And, I, and I'm absolutely not suggesting that you can do, you know, A equals B equals C or, or, or anything like that. But it's about retraining your brain to kind of recognize these things and start getting feedback. Because so often we are dependent on feedback loops in, uh, in, in the way we live, in, 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 our, in our teams, in our relationships, in our groups. And, and looking at the things at the bottom, some of the language we often use when we talk about those things, so I'm thinking about you know, going for a walk or reading or you know, listening to birds, protecting time off, is, is often we use the language of doing nothing. And, and that's a completely understandable language to use, but actually it's, it's really quite a strange way to talk about it because there is no such thing as doing nothing. You know, we, it's impossible to do nothing. And what we mean when we say we're doing nothing is we mean we're doing nothing of consequence. And what we mean when we say we're doing nothing of consequence really is we're doing nothing of consequence to other people because a lot of these things at the bottom, we don't get feedback from others. And we're so conditioned to, to, to understand the value of, of our actions based on feedback from other people, whether that's from a boss, whether that's from someone you've never met on social media, you know, the, but, but whether it's a, a, a like or an appraisal or, or anything in between, we get the sense of value is really easy to get when there is feedback. But for so many of these things, we don't get that feedback. So if it's a choice between being outside in nature or going gardening or recharging and doing something for someone else, we're so conditioned to lean into the doing something for somebody else because we're gonna get feedback. We're gonna get some confirmation that that action is valuable, which we often don't get. So again, it's a kind of a two way thing of, of the onus is on us to start to really understand and, and believe deep down that these roots will lead to these fruits and that will have a tangible impact on our, on our lives. So part of it is about that. It's about retraining our brains, just as we would exercise a, a muscle in our body or just as we would kind of 
take a car in for a service. It's about doing the same thing, but for our brains. But then the other part of it is about creating a language so that we can talk about it with other people. Because if we just say to other people, you know, I'm doing nothing, they're going to think you're doing nothing. Um, but if we can start articulating, you know, I'm doing this thing, and maybe, you know, maybe even I'm doing this thing for this reason, because it makes me feel like this, because it gives me that, we start to change the language around it. And, and if we can change the language about it, we can, we can talk about it more, we can be more open about it and break down some of the taboos or some of the uncertainty around burnout and resilience and kind of break through some of that, which can be great for us. It can be great for the teams that we're in and the people that we work for and the people we support, because while the language is so vague and undefined, it becomes a really hard thing to communicate. And as with the, the, the murmuration of starlings at the beginning, absolutely, this is a personal thing, but we have to do this collectively and we have to support each other through these processes. So I think this is the tool that I would, I would, I would really recommend doing uh, in your own time. And if you don't like trees, change it for something else, whatever it is that works for you. But this idea of, you know, what is it, what gives you resilience and what does resilience gives, give you? And really explore that and find connections and notice patterns and, and, if, and if you come away with it thinking, I can't, re I still can't justify doing those things at the bottom, then go back to it and try again and keep going and working out new patterns or new ways of, of kind of understanding or breaking down what these things really mean. So I've done a lot of talking there um, and um, I really hope that was useful, but I'm going to pass back to, to Cecily now, who's going to um, put us into uh, groups to, 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 to explore this a little bit more because it's all well and good hearing me talk, but I think you know you need to kind of hear yourself talk about, about what this might mean to you. Fab, thank you so much, Peter. So interesting. And I think for myself personally, I'm kind of listening to you speaking, thinking like, yes. I've definitely done that. I definitely need to do that. So uh, yes, yeah, really helpful. Um, okay, so yes, as Peter has said, we're going to go into breakout groups to discuss a few questions. So sorry to share a screen again, but this has the questions on. So I'm just gonna share it and I'll put them in the chat as well. Um, can everyone see that? Thumbs up. Yep, Peter's nodding, grand. So we're gonna put you into five rooms to just discuss these questions. So one is more about reflection on how you've got on this year in terms of what you found most challenging in terms of, you know, when looking after yourself and making time for you and your resilience, as well as how you can then use the resilience tree that Peter's introduced us to and any other tools you're aware of to improve your being, well-being, maintain your well-being being both personally and I think Peter's made that excellent point around it's also other people it's 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 that group effort so whether that's you know your family or the organization that you're working with the food poverty alliance that you're working with how can you look after each other and utilize those tools to kind of make sure that you're all maintaining your resilience and staying healthy in these stressful times so those are the questions I'm going to put you into five different groups automatically so you'll be randomly assigned we're going to have just about 10 minutes for that and then we'll come back we'll do some more sharing and there'll be opportunity to ask Peter questions as well as the group questions or Simon and I questions so if everyone is happy I'm going to move everyone into their groups so just click the button the pop-up when it, so we might still be waiting for one group okay right so for the next session uh, this is just going to be a chance to ask questions of the group so people can you know have a, an open discussion if people feel comfortable for that you can ask peter questions and i also thought just to capture some of what was shared within those breakout sessions we could use the wonderful tool that is mentimeter so i'm just going to which is a kind of online tool where i ask you a question the questions that we were kind of discussing in the breakout sessions and you can type in your responses so i can just run through them on the screen and you can see how other people have responded and what people are thinking we can kind of recognize if there are themes and kind of uh, things that you think, oh, I'd like to do that to help, you know, my resilience kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is put a link to menti.com in the chat. 
And then the code is four five two three zero oh, two seven. So if you just click on that URL within the chat and then the code is also there and it should come up with a little box to put the code in and then that should work quite nicely. So I'll give you a few minutes to just log into that. Um, and obviously, whilst we're doing this, if you've got any questions that come up that you're burning to ask, please do just whack them in the chat box or unmute yourself and um, ask, ask away. Okay, right, so I'm going to share my screen so you can see what people are responding with. So here we've got, so the question is, what was the biggest challenge to ensuring you took time for yourself this year? So there's a few responses, kind of not feeling I deserve rest, which I'm sure is something that people can kind of um, agree with. Um, for their own feelings, working from home and having that work-life balance, always being in the same place. You know, the office is the separation. It does provide that separation from work and home life and that's being missed. Emergency situation and the workload, how does that, you know, the workload increased hugely and it all seems urgent. So how does that work? Um, we've also got starting a new job, wanting to prove myself, but needing to take it slow at the same time. Yes, um, we do actually have a question. Oh, from Peter, this is, oh. Oh, Peter, do you want to run through that question? I was just sharing it in the chat box for people who couldn't access the mentee. Uh, ah, yeah. thank you. Oh, thanks, Hayley. Yeah, sorry about that. I mean, you can access it if you, if you don't have a laptop, that's fine. There was also identifying my needs and changing my patterns. So how, you know, how do you do that when everything feels so uh, stressed and busy? There's shielding, forcing people to take some time, previously working lots of jobs and was furloughed from two of them. So that's a lot of stress to deal with at one time. Um, added pressures put on people starting with a new job, living at home working from home, being at home during lockdown, the biggest challenge was breaking up that time. Nice, couch to 5k, love it. I'm sure you weren't alone in that. There were a lot of runners out and about. So yeah, lots of different, lots of different ones there that I'm, I'm sure many of you, um, you know, think you've experienced too. Um, there is a really interesting question in the chat there, which um, if you're happy, I can respond to. Please. Um, from the uh, Southwark Food Action um, Alliance. Um, so if, if trying to prove ourselves is at the root of it all, <clears throat> are there any tips on how to ditch that approach, which is a, you know, an a, amazing question of one that could be explored at, at, at length. I think the, the, the key thing from, from my experience is around this idea of feedback and thinking, where are we getting this sense of ourselves from? Um, because I think so often, and certainly for me and, and, and from other people I've spoken to, if, it, if it's coming from outside, from other people, if we're to kind of building our sense of identity and purpose based on feedback from others, that can be, that can be great when things are going well, but when things are, are going less well, when, when there's lots of demands on you, too many demands on you, or things are difficult, then that sense of self can, 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 can really be threatened. And so one aspect of resilience is trying to trying to um, get that feedback from ourselves about, uh, you, know, be, you know, responding to our needs, uh, uh, kind of recognising the impact that we're having by kind of listening to ourselves rather than just basing our kind of our value or our impact on, on other people, you know, which is really hard in, in our group. You know, we had someone who was talking about how, you know, they've got five children and obviously in a family like that, it's really hard to kind of find space for your own needs. Um, and, and it might be harder in that instance than maybe it is in another instance, but it's about finding those, those kind of points where 
you're not just getting feedback externally. You're also giving yourself feedback, listening to what's helping you uh, and, and trying to kind of build in those patterns internally rather than just relying on, on the external. Um, so I hope that's a, a reasonably helpful, very short answer. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Um, were there any other questions? I mean, one question I had for you, Peter, was if you have any other suggested reading or things to watch on this topic that people can kind of delve into if, if there's ever any spare time to do so. Uh, yeah, I can, I can. I'll share a couple of things with you, Cecily, if you want to uh, pass them around uh, in an email. Um, I think I would, I would caution that I mean, this is a bit hypocritical as someone who's talking about about resilience and burnout, but you know, there's only so much of listening to other people that I think is useful. Um, you know, I think the key is is exploring it for yourself because all of the list, of, all of the tips and and the tools and you know the things I've worked through, the, th the things other people do, will work for some and they won't work for everybody. And if we if we just base it on what other people are saying and it doesn't work, it's easy to take that personally and think we're not good at it. But actually we need to kind of listen to ourselves, find out what works for ourselves and, and practice that. Uh, so I, I will share a few things, but I would, I would kind of urge that, that sense of trying to find your own space in this as well. Yeah, fab. Um, um, and um, so there's just another point there about, about, about self-feedback and, and that it's important that self-feedback is positive. I think that's really right, but I think it's also to, to, to notice if it becomes negative to recognize that and not to ignore it and, and, and noticing any feedback. It's not about feedback in terms of valuing yourself or judging yourself. It's about feedback in terms of noticing the impact of your actions on yourself. That's what I mean by feedback, not giving yourself you know, a score out of 10 for the things you've done. But these are the things I did today and this was the impact it had on me because you're gonna get feedback from other people about the impact it's had on them. Uh, and if you don't balance that out with your own impact, uh, then it's really easy to get lost in other people's needs. Yeah. Andrea's made a good point in that it's good to give yourself time to grieve and allow yourself to acknowledge when you don't feel great. And it's perfectly fine to not feel fine. That's normal life. Yeah, very much normal life. I mean, there's been a lot of chat about kind of separating the workspace. That's something that's come up, obviously, in this Mentimeter. Does anyone have any suggestions that they just want to share in these last four minutes of how they deal with that and how they separate the two? You can use the chat box. No. It is handy. Yeah. Yeah changing into work clothes and one thing we um talked about in my group was um having time in your diary uh to to you know like a lunch a lunch break um and whether or not you actually use it it's another way of communicating to other people this is time is important to me um and and it kind of it could it, it's that kind of justification so that you don't have to explain yourself again and again why you can't attend a meeting at this time or do that thing at that time uh, and, and it's a way of starting to yeah, kind of use that language of, uh, of making space for yourself. There's some amazing suggestions in the, in the chat box coming through. Yeah, lots of good ones. And yeah, I think there's a good one about kind of separating the time between work and home, we needing more time to calm down, which and yeah, it feels like you just walk from one room and suddenly it's meant to be a different, you're in your different work, you're in your different home time, that's not necessarily the case. So a walk around the block, as Angie suggests, does help break that up. And I think with all of these things, again, just spending even just like 30 seconds after you've done them, just noticing the impact it's had. And just, just again, it's that, that kind of feedback because a lot of these things, as we saw with the, the roots and the fruits, it's really hard to really notice the change and the impact because they're so internal. Um, they're not being given to you by someone else. So building in a little bit of time just to kind of notice, kind of like the, the minute silence we did uh, at the start of this, of just, just sort of, really really believing that a walk around the block ahead of work is a good you know really noticing what it does to you because i think if if we just do it and we don't check in with ourselves around it it's, it, it then becomes quite easy to to push away if something more important or more urgent feels like it's it's pressing our time yeah very much so 
Okay, we've only got one minute until we're due to finish. So I think with that in mind, I'll wrap things up. But there's so much being shared in that chat box. I'm going to save that. And we Peter has written a blog that we will put on the Sustain website tomorrow. So we'll try and weave some of what's been discussed and shared today into that. So it's a nice kind of summary of what's been discussed. As we've already mentioned, this has also been recorded. So you can come back to it at any time to catch up or share it with colleagues if you think that it is important that that they are aware of it too so you can build a more resilient team around you um so if no one's got any final questions i think we'll wrap it up there but thank you so much to peter and thank you all for taking the time to come to this i really hope that you found it useful and beneficial um and please do get in touch at any point uh, my email is cecily at sustainweb.org i think you probably all have it um somewhere but yeah do reach out anytime so thank you um and if we don't speak before have a very merry christmas or a, a nice festive season thanks all goodbye thanks everyone bye thanks everyone